<laughs> welcome, 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 everybody <laughs> to the individual animal <laughs> uh, podcast about dogs, people, and animal sheltering. I'm your host, Nikki Yuka, with my co-host, Bernice Clifford. And today we also have Acadia Generelli on the podcast, who, well, I'm going to let her tell you who she is. She's one of our awesome staff members. Um but she has a lot of more titles than I can probably um, think of right now. So I'll <laughs> let her get into that. I know we did say at the end of our last podcast that we were going to be talking about behavior euthanasia this week. But uh, we decided in between Christmas and New Year's, a more happy podcast would probably be more appropriate. So um, today we're just going to be having a good time. We're going to talk a little bit, do some follow up on those Chicago dogs we told you about. Uh, creature's going to be making some fun, funny noises in the background. Um, and then we're just going to do a quick meet your staff too with Acadia so that when we say Acadia's name on the podcast, you know who we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so Acadia, why don't you get started a little bit? Tell us um, who you are, what your responsibilities are here. And I know you have kind of a fun, cute story about how you got started here. So I'm going to get started with that. Sure. So I'm Acadia. I am the shelter manager and volunteer coordinator at Animal Farm here. And I actually started my Animal Farm Foundation journey back in 2015 when I was just freshly 18 years old. And I had to meet a community service requirement for my senior year high school government and economics class. And my mom and Bernice and Nikki, and I've known them since I was a kid. So we called up Bernice and we're like, hey, can I come hang out with some dogs? And that's, I started out as a volunteer and pretty much have been some involved in Animal Farm Foundation since then. And I haven't looked back, so. (laughs) And you did one of our internships too, didn't you, while you were a volunteer? Yes, I did the week-long internship. And I learned a ton about clicker training and sheltering and, you know, how not to breed label and everything that Animal Farm stands for. I just, it was pack full of information. So, so not to totally put you on the spot here, but do you have something that you thought about animal welfare when you first started that now you're like, this is totally not what I expected. Or um, like for me, I'll just say like, I had no idea um, that animal welfare wasn't just all run by the ASPCA, (laughs) which sounds crazy now. Um, I just thought it was all a a partnership of they. Um, (laughs) And I had no idea it was so big, like had conferences and things like that so for you is there anything you can think of that you were surprised by as the as you got more into and into working at animal farm probably the all the different kinds of dogs i mean i knew that there were so many different types of personalities out there but i always had higher drive dogs and i never really had a dog that would just come and lay down from the get-go and I've met so many dogs through here that just walk in and they're like "Eh, whatever and they just kind of flop on the floor I'm like the first time that happened when I was volunteering I looked at um Peggy who used to work here when I started volunteering I was like is this dog okay and she's like yeah I was like what What do you mean it's it's supposed to be running (laughs) circles around me (laughs) you know I I used to in my backyard I used to build little jumps and try to do agility with my dogs because I could never get them to be tired. (laughs) And so seeing a dog that just was calm, like the three in this room right now, I was baffled by that idea. So, yeah. (laughs) Um, So can you, we, uh, I don't know if you've heard, but we've been talking a little bit about our trips to Chicago. Um, and we did mention, I think, um, on the Breed Labels podcast that we got five dogs back from Chicago. Um, so if you want to just give us some information how they're doing, you got any 
cute things they're up to. I know they went to our Christmas party, so. Uh, those were not Chicago dogs. They came oh. to our Christmas party. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> you are correct. I am correct. I know I am. Um, our senior dogs came to our Christmas party. <laughs> yes. And I think it's important, you know, we keep saying we're doing senior dogs, and then all of a sudden we made a... Um, a big turn, right? And took these dogs from Chicago. And so um, something to know for, for our listeners about Animal Farm is we sort of pivot based on what's happening in the world. And right. um, we decided that we needed to expand. We're still doing old dogs. We love our old dogs. Um, but we decided we needed to expand and have some young dogs here too, because that is what the shelters need help with right now. So sorry right. to interrupt you. I'm sorry to mix up our senior dogs with our Chicago dogs. <laughs> there, we keep Nikki in the office whenever possible. <laughs> uh, so yeah, why don't you tell us about how the Chicago dogs are doing? So the Chicago dogs are doing great. Uh, we got, like you guys have said, five of them. Um, Alberto is a chubby, squishy cheek sweetheart that you just want to like pinch his little cheeks all the time and he loves it. <laughs> he thinks it's wonderful because he just wants to be with the people. Uh, Shaq really loves his toys, which I didn't expect when I first met him because he came up and he also just wanted me to hold him. But as soon as I took a ball out, he was like, oh yeah, that's that thing's really awesome. Um, Wildberry and Theodora absolutely love each other. They, they're from different shelters, right? So they didn't know each other before they got here? No, nope, they are a, a newfound little BFF friendship that they've created. And, you know, if they're playing with the other dogs, they're happy. But if they get like a glimpse of the other, they're like, that's, I want to play, br bring bring my girlfriend out, please. Oh, that's I, awesome. <laughs> I want to hang out with her. And Wildberry has a great story because Wildberry sat in um, the shelter for, I think they said 300 days. Um, yeah. And then their um, training folks had gone and worked with Ashley on playgroups and Eleanor went back and put Wildberry out with dogs. And that's how they discovered, whoops, we've been saying she's not good with dogs and holy smoke, she is. Yeah, she actually, she's, she's been really good with all the dogs that we've put her with so far. Um, yeah, she's, she's really awesome. And then the last one, Teletubby, she's the only one in our senior category out of the five dogs that we've gotten. And oh boy, does she love people. I took her out and I was trying to like, I was like, oh, well, do you want to play? Like, what do you want to do? And I like took a couple steps to like run play with her and she came right over and she was just like kind of bumping me with her nose as like a play style but she was like I'm not gonna mouth you like she's so polite she's oh, so nice. sweet and she's just a cute sweet senior that they're all just they're all really really nice dogs that we got so and that's awesome and Teletubby has a really great story from Chicago also I mean great in in a in a sad sense but um she actually came from a family who loved her very much um and from what I understand they lived they were living in their car because they yeah. didn't have a place to live and Chicago gets very cold and they didn't want their dog cold so they surrendered her to um animal control yeah yeah and you can definitely tell she was very well loved because she just Aww. she comes over and she like place her head like on my knee or something and she just like sits there and she's like okay I just really want you to pet me right now and it's very sweet and Oh, heartbreaking really at the same time right 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 and listen if her family gets a place um and they know that she's here we would be more than happy to make sure they get their dog back oh yes definitely cool um acadia also is in charge of finding fosters for our lovely old dogs um our old dogs can stay here if they if if that's the best spot for them, but we do like them to have a couch because they do sit longer than, than, than younger guys. Um, do you want to talk about that at all, Acadia? We have a couple of fosters. Yeah, sure. We have a few fosters, a very great foster that we have is sitting right next to me on the couch here, Nikki. So she's got <laughs> Mr. Lincoln, but yeah, it's, it's tough finding fosters out there right now. Um, a lot of people kind of, they're like, well, we want to adopt a younger dog. And I'm like, well, just maybe take this, fosters this senior foster dog for a temporary little stint until you find your young dog because... let's share the couch come on yeah, i mean i think it's hard for all organizations right now finding fosters though fosters and adopters um we got to figure out how to build that back up 
yeah, so many people are just kind of like they want one very, very specific thing and it's like a golden nugget. And, you know, even if you find it, they're like, oh, well, I don't I don't know. And so it's it's been a little difficult, but we're working through it and we keep finding more fosters. And I actually was answering some emails for people that are interested in volunteering and possibly fostering as they get to know the organization. So great. We love volunteers, especially if they foster also. Yes. Yes. Another really great foster that we have is Stephanie and she's got Mr. George and she's adopted two previous dogs from us. So yeah. Excellent. So we did have dogs go to the Christmas party. (laughs) We did. Yes, you weren't you weren't completely off. We had a couple of fabulous seniors at the Christmas party. They actually spent um, a few days up there with our founder Jane. Uh We have Um, some really cute videos of them just having a great time up there. Um, Katie, do you want to tell us more about those guys? Sure. So uh, the two that spent time at the Christmas party were uh, Toast and Shiva. And Shiva actually has kind of a sad story as well. Um, She was living with her person and they had dementia and their son fell ill. So they couldn't find a spot for her to go. So she ended up here with us. Um, and Toast also kind of has a little bit of a sad story as well. It's uh, the seniors have a tough go about it right now. The ones that are in our care, uh, Toast is 15 and he lived with this person his entire life, but they fell on some hard times and some difficulties in their home situation. And he got out of the yard and they kind of just were like, we can't, it's, it's getting too much because he was escaping a lot and running free through local Poughkeepsie, New York, and (laughs) he ended up at a vet clinic, and then they, we were visiting that vet clinic, a couple of other staff members here, and they were like, hey, there's this really old dog, we're gonna bring him back, and they are both very kind dogs, she got a little zippy energy in her, and Toast kind of half the time is like, what's going on? You want me to go where? Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? What did you ask me? And he's a little confused sometimes, but I think that makes him more endearing. So <laughs> yes, it does. And I think a really nice thing about Toast is he appears to be good with everything. Oh like yeah, he's a super easy dog for someone to add to their their oh, house. Oh yeah, I keep calling him. Um, like I, I give them all goofy little nicknames. Um, and Toast has been Toaster Pastry Puff because I feel like it's just <laughs> like. <laughs> That's super cute. It just comes along with like how sweet he is. Like he looks at you and he like squints his eyes and it's almost like he's smiling at you with his eyes all the time. That's so. adorable. Yeah. And she was she's she's got the biggest ears and she like tilts her head when she's like really wants a treat or something. She like puts her ears up as high as she can get them and tilts her head and she's like, Yeah, I know you want me to, I know I know I want that treat and I know you want to give me that treat. So that's funny. I love how she sits. It just makes me laugh. I don't know yeah. if we can get a picture of that. If we have a picture of her sitting in that oh, funny, ridiculous, do. like she thinks she's a person. Yep. She sits almost like side saddle too. It's really yeah. cute. It's yeah. yeah. And then we do have one more senior um, at the on shelter. the property. Yeah. We on have the, multiple the, more seniors, and, but uh, like on the at, property. At the shelter on the property, um, Mr. Kylo, and he is a deaf bossy bossy little man but extremely sweet (laughs) oh yes he is the sweetest boy he's just he and the reason he's bossy is because he just wants all of the attention all of the attention all of the love like he'll look at you and he'll bark and as soon as you like pat his head he's like "Hmm, i'm happy now and he'll like trot away so we are positively reinforcing the barking thank you (laughs) akadia (laughs) not all the time Not all the time. Sometimes I look at him and I'll just like point in his direction because you can't be like, no, thank you. You just point in his direction. He's like, oh, fine. He'll (laughs) he'll then go walk away himself. But it's like if you're petting him and then you stop, he's like, why'd you stop sometimes? So that's that's the positive reinforcement reinforcement for you. (laughs) (laughs) My ears need it sometimes. But yeah, and then like I said, we have Mr. Lincoln, but Nikki Nikki might be the one to better describe him because she's living every day with him. But we also have George and Foster. Do you want me to do George first or you want to say Lincoln? Okay, I'll do George first. So George is an old man and he 
he's pretty good he loves his dog friends um he's currently in love with his foster sister etta they sleep on the couch all the time together they are very sweet um stephanie and ernie both have deeply fallen in love with him so who knows maybe he'll end up getting a home for christmas with them we'll see (laughs) i'm pretty sure he thinks he already has one yeah he does he's pretty he's pretty sure that the couch belongs to him and then you know the majority of the bed is also his because stephanie and ernie have definitely told me that he takes up the entire bed if he can (laughs) the other two will like curl up at the bottom and they have like the slivers on the side and george's dead center of the bed good boy george yep he's he's a sweet boy he's from georgia but you know he's a nice boy uh so if, if lincoln is currently uh living in my home as a foster dog um with my other personal dog jambo uh we call our nickname for him is stinkin lincoln um, not really because he's stinky. He's not that stinky. I think just because it rhymes and it's fun. <laughs> uh, but he's quite the personality, Lincoln. He really is interested in knowing when breakfast is and when dinner is. And he thinks it's usually the two hours before it actually is happening. <laughs> I feel I feel that I, I'm I'm the same. I mean, being the old boy that he is, he really just likes to sleep all day most of the time, um, and just seems super content having a nice couch to hang out on and sleep on at my house. So yeah, that's Lincoln. I also call him Stinky Linky all the time. Stinky but, Linky. But that's because there's a friend of mine who has a son named Lincoln, and when he was a baby, we used to call him Stinky Linky all the time. So. I saw that when Lincoln was coming, I went, oh, no, I already know I'm going to call this dog Stinky Linky every single time I see him. <laughs> but, yeah, it's a it's a good nickname. Nice ring to it. <laughs> and Lincoln's family was also losing their home, right? Did I understand that right? Yes, I believe that his person lost their home. And he also came in with two kitties. So he's he's likes his he was friendly with cats, which is really nice to have. Um, but yeah, he was surrendered with two cats. Um, I believe his owner was going to be living out of a car and didn't want Lincoln to be cold. That seems to be a sad trend for a lot of people losing their homes and having to get rid of their dogs because they don't want their dogs to be cold like they're concerned they're going to be cold. So Dogs are family. Yes, they are. That's why I still have all mine. <laughs> And when I'm in a bigger house, I plan on fostering as many as I can. We'll see what Jake says about that. <laughs> you ask for forgiveness later. I, yeah. I've learned this over the years. Yep. Just do it. Everything is permissible until you ask for permission. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, thanks for um, hanging out with us. I hope everybody's having a good holiday. As we should all um, say goodbye, including Creature. I wish he was snoring a little bit if more. You, if you put the microphone up, he'll probably at least sniff it. All right, let's see if we can get a goodbye from Mr. Creature. Uh, we'll have to get some pictures of the dogs that are usually hanging out in the podcast room with us. But Creechy, what you doing, buddy? He can't hear you. He just walked right He's away like, from me. Mickey, that is not peanut butter. He's you can like, get away with it once. <laughs> He's like, get that out of my face. Katie. He's this got is the quietest this dog's ever been. He's finding this quite offensive Stage that fright, we're maybe? just throwing microphones in his face. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody. Uh, stay tuned for next week. Um, thanks for uh, listening in to our really cool dog stories. And if you want to adopt any of our dogs or foster any of our dogs, uh, let us know. Okay. Great. Thanks. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy